Uh, okay, let's start then example number four. In this case, GPS is given to us as S plus one divided by S two, and GC is equal to KP as before. And we want to draw the root locus for positive numbers, uh, number of KP, and for uh, negative values of KP as well. So we will, I will draw the root locus for both of them here, for negative values of KP. And L, and for positive values, PL. So here we have two poles, N is equal to two. Both of them are located at the origin, and M is equal to one. We have one zero, which is located at minus one. We will have two branches for positive locus and two branches for negative locus. One of the branches will go towards the zero and the other branch in minus m will one so one branch will go towards infinity and accordingly we will have one asymptote. Since we have one asymptote let's see where will be the uh, point on the real axis in which the asymptote cr uh, crosses the real axis xa we can calculate it as before if you remember we have sum of zi is minus sum of pi is divided by n minus n we have one zero so z1 is equal to one minus both of the poles are at origin, so 1 minus 0 divided by 1, which gives us 1. We should also calculate the angle of the asymptotes, RQCA, which is equal to 2H plus 1 times pi, where H is equal to 0 and 1, no, only 0 because we have only one asymptote for positive locus and 2 h pi again with h equal to 0 for negative locus so we will have KCL a equal to replacing h with 0 we will have pi for positive locus and we will have 0 for negative locus And here we have XA. So looking at at the transfer function of GP, we can say that we have one C at minus one, one zero at minus one, and both of the poles P one and two are located at the origin. Okay, so here we can the open loop poles and zeros at minus two, one zero at minus two and two poles at the origin. Regarding the asymptotes, uh, both of the asymptotes will start at x equal to one. For positive locus we will have the angle of pi and for negative locus we will have the angle of zero. So asymptotes will start here one for positive for negative locus the angle will be zero so this will here we will have the asymptote and for positive locus we have the angle of pi which means that this will be our asymptote now let's see which sections of the real axis belong to our root locus. Regarding the real axis, we know that for positive locus, uh, sections of real axis for which we have odd number of zeros and poles belong to the root locus. So looking at the 
location of the poles and zeros for the PL, we can say that the region from minus infinity to minus 2 belong to positive locus because we have three poles and zeros on the right hand side and for negative locus we need to have uh, even number of poles and zeros on the right hand side so the region from minus 2 up to infinity so here we have minus 2 up to infinity will be a part of the root locus so from minus infinity to minus 2 it means that these parts of the real axis determines the root locus for us and for negative locus these parts of the real x will determine the, uh, the root locus on the real axis okay so what else do we need the next step uh, we need to determine the break away or break in points for our system so looking at the positive locus we see that we have two poles here they should uh, depart from there and then arrive at some point here I would say afterwards one will go towards the zero here and the other one will go towards infinity so we need to determine this break in point we also need to determine the angle of departure for the po for the poles. We will do it in the next step. And regarding the negative locus, uh, two poles in the origin we have. So one of them will go towards zero here, and the other one will go towards infinity. So let's start by uh, finding the break-in. breaking points we need to solve m prime d minus d prime n equal to zero the equation for n we have s plus one so m prime is equal to one and d prime is equal to two s accordingly m prime d will be s2 minus d prime n will be 2 s times s plus 1 equal to 0 which results in uh, minus s2 minus 2 s equal to 0 we will have s equal to 0 and s equal to minus This will be the break break in points for our system. So here we have s plus one at the nominator and our zero is located at oops, minus one. Okay. So here we have minus one for the zero. We can see that s equal to 0 belongs to negative locus, which is the origin itself, as the break, uh, break away point in this case, and minus 2 belongs to the positive locus as the break in point. Now we need to determine the angles of departure for the poles at the origin. So let's Define angles of departure as Q times of tip. Uh, in which Q is equal to two because we have two poles at the origin. So two alpha departure is equal to sum of phi i minus sum of theta i plus 2 h plus 1 times pi where h is equal to 0 and 1 for positive locus 
and sum of phi i minus sum of theta i plus 2h pi where h is equal to 0 and 1 for negative of us. However, looking at the uh, position of the poles and zeros of the open loop system, we can see that we have only one zero, so for which if I just draw the position of the poles and the zero here, so this the angle phi one will be equal to zero. Yeah. And we don't have any other pole except the ones in the origin so we can write 2 alpha departure is equal to 0 minus 0 plus uh, 2 h plus 1 times pi and 2 h pi for negative locus accordingly alpha departure is equal to by replacing h with 0 and 1 we will have pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 for positive locus and 0 uh, 2 pi divided by 2 which is pi for negative locus so if you go back to the root locus graph, for the positive locus we have one branch going departing the the poles with the mm, angle of pi over two, and the other one with the angle of three pi over two, yeah, pi over two, and three pi over two, as you can see here. So one with this angle, and the other one this angle starting from the origin they will go towards the breaking point here and afterwards one of the branches will go towards infinity the other one will go towards uh, the finite zero in the case of a negative locus one branch will go towards infinity departing from the origin with the angle of zero and the other one with the angle of pi which is already the case that, that as we have here yeah? so in this case one departs with the angle of pi the other branch departs the pole with the angle of zero so in uh, accordingly we, our root locus diagram is complete for this case for this example now let's see what are the questions that we have for this one for this example there are some uh, questions so first one is find the range of values of kp in r such that the closed loop system is by boy state we have to determine what are the values of kp for which our system is stable again by looking at the graphs we can say that referring to positive locus for values of kp or rho as we use usually bigger than zero our system will be by boy stable and for values of kp or rho smaller than zero our system will not be stable but we can uh, prove this as well using again the ROS criteria that we have so again uh, let's write the characteristics equation as ds plus rho and s equal to zero we will have s2 plus rho times s plus one equal to zero which is s2 plus rho s plus rho and if we construct the ROS table for it we will have one rho rho here and draw here again and accordingly if you want to have pi boy stability
we should have all the components in the first column bigger than zero so we will get row bigger than zero or kp bigger than zero this is the condition that we have in order to have the bybo stability the next question is uh, compute if possible the value of kp such that the step response of the closed loop system using a second order approximation is critically damped i.e. there is no overshoot so when do we have the critically damped behavior for a second order system this happens whenever both poles of the closed loop system both poles of the second order system are located on the real axis and their value is the same as each other looking at the root locus graphs that we have the curves we can see that this can happen in the case of uh, PL and it will be right at this point yeah so when both of the poles are here their real value is the same as each other both of them are real so the behavior of the system will be similar to a critically damped one and for this we need to obtain the value of kp how to obtain it we need to write the the condition on the amplitude so here is the amplitude condition amplitude of n divided by d should be equal to amplitude of minus 1 over rho so remember that here we have two poles at the origin 1 0 at minus 1 and the desired position of the pole in this case is uh, equal to the break in point yeah, where s is equal to minus 2 so accordingly we need to have the poles of our closed loop system here at minus 2 so in this case we can write the amplitude condition accordingly so we will have amplitude of s plus 1 divided by s2 equal to the amplitude of minus 1 over rho where s is equal to minus 2 so we can say that minus 1 divided by 4 is equal to minus 1 over rho and from here we can say that rho is equal to Four because rho should have a positive value and accordingly we can say that kp should be equal to 4 in order to have the closed loop poles located at the at minus 2 as we have here all right so that's all for this example again don't forget to send me the root locus that you obtain using MATLAB, compare them with what we have here for both negative locus and positive locus and send me the results that you have from MATLAB.